Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've been doing well. Here is another episode of my top 10 favorite and from what I believe the best performances by the greatest actors of all time. I'm starting from 10 and then working my way up to number one. And I've seen every film under the sun of every actor I will be honoring on this channel. So not to worry, these lists come from passionate accuracy. Since my last episode was of the great Jack Lemmon, who do you think would be next? That's right, it's the lovable Walter Matthau. He and Lemmon were household names in my family growing up. I can honestly remember being a kid and watching these two in all 10 films they made with each other and just laughing my face off. Like Jack Lemmon, Walter Matthau also had great dramatic solo performances that are absolutely memorable. He was much more than just a comedic actor. He was really an actor of substance. All the best film actors come from theater, and Matthau is no different. He was actually quoted as being somewhat the next Cary Grant, or something similar to that. Just because he had this charm, you just couldn't resist. If I could do a top 20 for Walter Matthau, you best believe I could absolutely do that, and it would be really tough to narrow it down. He is just so much fun to watch and connect with, and to be honest, I think it's because he just reminds me so much of my own dad. Lovable, fun, charming, hilarious, but also you can tell he was a man of hard work, sincerity, and integrity. Let's get started on the top 10 best and favorite performances of Walter Matthau. Number 10, Dennis the Menace, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> Growing up as a 90s kid, of course, this was my very first discovery of Walter Matthau. This came out in 1993, but you best believe I was sure grateful to watch it on the good old VHS a few years later. Do you guys still have that copy? I still do. For those who grew up watching the old TV series and read the comics, I'm quite sure everyone was so excited to see Matthau as Mr. Wilson, the curmudgeon who lives next door to the cute little lovable troublemaker, Dennis, played by Mason Gamble. Matthau just connects so beautifully with Gamble here, and we as the audience connect with Mr. Wilson from the very beginning with his experiences of dread, all the way to his dramatic change by the very end. You know someone is a great actor when just one look says everything and more. Obviously one of the most memorable scenes and one of the most memorable memes is when Walter Matthau is taking a picture in front of the prized plant that he grew and, yep, it says it all. <laughs> Number nine, the front page. This might be surprising to a lot of people if you've seen this, but really take another look at Matthau's performance here. This was a remake of the original front page, which came out in 1931, which is also an adaptation of the play that came out in 1928. This film has been adapted too many times to count, honestly, but why do you think that is? Because it's so damn good. This was Lemon and Matthau's technically fourth collaboration with each other, since their third was a directorial debut from Lemon on this film, Koch, starring Matthau. This is classic newspaper funny, I like to call it, where, you know, everyone talks fast and almost in one tone with their cigarette-inspiring vision and pessimism, see? And it's just so damn funny, I can't help it. Matthau plays Burns, a newspaper editor who tries to stop Lemon, his top reporter, from getting married so they can cover one more crime story about the corruption of the police. Matthau is just so commanding in the role, and have you ever seen a haircut like this on the man? I don't think so. Apparently, Lemon and Matthau had a lot of tension working on the film together and had a small falling out with each other, mainly because of so many demands from the studios on this film, but it all worked out, of course, because we had these other great films to follow. Well, except this one. It's okay, they both write this one off as well. But this adaptation definitely makes it to number nine because of just how fun Matthau is. Number eight, Charlie Varick. Practically the cult classic that everyone appreciates now with Matthau playing the title role, a criminal who along with his wife and associates rob a small town bank, which goes very wrong, and then find out they stole from the mob. I first discovered this off of Turner Classic Movies, which I'll be mentioning quite a lot as I continue on this channel, but this caught me really by surprise. 
Matthau's performance here is very understated, simple, effective, and very different from a lot of the characters he's played. Matthau actually didn't like his performance at all, which I think it's because this came out in the 1970s where the age of the anti-hero was big, and this was directed almost effortlessly by Don Siegel who did Dirty Harry, and Matthau really does shine in one of his more serious leading roles. He's played a great handful of series villains before, but it was just so great to see him as the anti-hero here. You should definitely give this one a look if you're really looking for more of a dramatic with a great sense of tension and action in Matthau's performance. Number seven, Grumpy Old Men. Yes, this is number seven for me, and it honestly goes hand in hand with its sequel, Grumpier Old Men. Lemon and Matthau are at it again as John and Max, childhood friends who have a 20 plus year feud with each other over a woman and haven't gotten over it. And now there's another woman played by Anne Margaret moving in next to them. And obviously each one of them have the hots for and try to compete with each other to win her affection. In the moments of comedy where they're battling with each other back and forth, oh my gosh, Matthau just makes you laugh so, so hard. But don't forget the lovely moments of sincerity that are just very moving. Just like this scene where John has a heart attack and Max brings him to the hospital. Max checks up on him and the nurse asks him if he's friend or family. He pauses and asks, what did you say? She asks again, are you a friend or family? Pauses and says with love in his heart, friend. Many people say it's not as good as their early collaborations, but I think it's just wonderful with how great their chemistry is that they can make any script work. It's just like seeing your favorite band in high school, in concert, 20 years later, and you can just see that they can still put on a great show. If you haven't seen this, please do yourself a favor and watch this and Grumpier Old Men. You and your whole family will have such a great time. Number six, The Bad News Bears. One of the best films ever about kids baseball, with Matthau's drunken ex-minor league coach, Morris Buttermaker, developing a connection with the kids, including his own estranged daughter on the team, and doing his best to lead them to victory. I'll always remember the scene that he and Tatum O'Neill have together. Tatum O'Neill plays his daughter, and they're having a conversation in the dugout. If you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it, but there's a great memorable moment when they're talking about the relationship that they really haven't built with each other. It is very moving, and it definitely takes the film in a different direction, in a much deeper direction that I didn't really expect. I remember how much that really struck me as a kid, when I barely knew Matthau besides his movies in the 90s. And this was the beginning for me of seeing his range as an actor. And yes, in a small but funny and heartwarming film, like this. Also, this film has one of the best uses of classical opera music in a comedy I've ever seen. Remember, this is not just a fantastic comedy, but a great inspirational sports movie for kids. I honestly love the sports movies where the players start off with no athletic ability at all, but after constant practice and repetition fueled by a huge why, they discover something much greater within themselves. And remember, giving it your all is what's most important. And that's a lovely lesson that Matthau actually teaches here. Granted, this does not have an inspirational cheesy ending, which is another reason why I love it. But please, take time to watch this one with your at least 11-year-old kid. At least. <laughs> not the remake. Please do not watch the remake. Number five, Koch. Came out in 1971, directed by the great Jack Lemmon in his directorial debut with his friend Walter Matthau, earning his first Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. This is indeed one of the best dramatic and heartwarming depictions of an old retired salesman who is forced by his son to join a nursing home. Highly reluctant of joining, he escapes and embarks on a road trip, encountering many characters, including a pregnant teenager that opens his eyes to a whole new meaning of life. Matthau is just beautiful in this film, playing older than he is and because of his wit and charm, we love embarking on this journey with him. That we too start to reflect what is our purpose? What is something that we truly care about? And another deeper basis is coming from the relationship between a grandfather and his grandson. 
that math out just plays out so beautifully here. I use that word a lot. You know, don't judge me for it. Number four, Pete and Tilly. Starring Mathau and Carol Burnett as initially blind dates whose unconventional romance takes them down a road they never expected. In my opinion, this is one of the most underrated comedy drama films, period. This came out in 1972, when Mathau was still at the height of his comedic powers, and what this film amazingly did for him is take his romantic charm and really grounded it. Some of the more dramatic scenes in the film are some of the more genuine that I've ever seen from Mathau. And like I said before, the sign of a brilliant actor is when he can say so much by doing so little, and his performance in this film indeed exemplifies that. It always helps when you have an Academy Award nominated screenplay backing you up as well. But remember, this exemplifies how strong of a collaborator and scene partner Mathau really is. And I can understand why this is such a personal favorite of my mom's, and I'm just so thankful that she introduced this to me. If you do get a chance to see it, yes, please do. I highly recommend it, as this film was not really widely released. And so if you have even a chance to purchase it, it's well worth it. I guarantee it. Number three, The Odd Couple. These top three spots, ladies and gentlemen, were very hard to decipher, just FYI. The second collaboration of Lemon and Mathau here is just a bona fide classic. The role of Oscar Madison was originated by Mathau on Broadway with Art Carney playing Felix, which is still amazing to me how Mathau really wanted to play Felix since he said playing Oscar was just too easy. I love and respect him for that because it just tells me that Mathau was a real actor and welcomed challenges. Nevertheless, his portrayal of Oscar will remain ever so presently in comedic history. If you don't know the story, Oscar is a divorced father and sports writer who is the best friend of Felix, a neurotic nut who is getting a divorce and just can't cope with it. They room in together and thus the incompatibility of the neurotic cleanliness of Felix mixed with the unorganized disgusting mess of Oscar make them the odd couple. Indeed, it was a huge hit, and I find it's always difficult to adapt this show for stage and or television because of just how strong the chemistry is between these two. I've honestly only seen like two episodes of the TV series with Jack Klugman and Tony Randall, and I haven't seen any of the new one. And so you tell me if that one is any good, but certainly you can't tell me that it tops the great portrayal of Mathau in the role of Oscar. Yes, it may have came too easy, but it certainly was worth it. Number two, The Fortune Cookie. Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau's very first collaboration, written and directed by Billy Wilder, and Matthau's only Academy Award winning performance for Best Supporting Actor. Jack Lemmon is a cameraman who is accidentally and only slightly injured at a football game by a player, and he is forced by his brother-in-law to feign the injuries to drum up a big lawsuit and settlement. Mathau plays the crooked shyster lawyer brother-in-law, Willie Gingrich of Gingrich, Gingrich, and Gingrich. You want to see a movie where Mathau steals every scene? Yep, this is it. He commands every single frame he is in, which really makes sense of his character. Willie Gingrich is a crook, a liar. To put it bluntly, he's a lawyer, but he's so damn charming that we just love him. Mathau gives him so much depth and humanity that we just love this guy and we love what he's fighting for. If you haven't seen this, please, please watch it. It is indeed among the best comedies you'll ever see and worth it just for Mathau alone. Here are just a few honorable mentions. A New Leaf, which is historically a memorable movie as being a film written, directed, and starring one of the great underrated artists of Hollywood, Elaine May. Mathau plays a broke playboy who charms his way to marry a lonely rich woman, played by May, and then plot to murder her and inherit her money. Black comedy, of course, but Mathau's performance is very, very different here, which is very honorable. This was a great example of comparing him to Cary Grant because this is a great example of the charm and mystery he gives, like Grant did in Suspicion. Very fun off-the-wall performance here. 
California Suite, which is another great Neil Simon piece which tells four separate stories of four sets of couples' misadventures of their stay at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Matthau plays a husband who wakes up to find a girl who he thinks he slept with and loses his mind, believing he accidentally cheated on his wife. It's one of the greater farcical moments in Matthau's career for sure. Neil Simon said himself that it was one of the more enjoyable performances he had ever seen from Matthau. First Monday in October, another fun comedy drama based on a play of the same name by Jerome Lawrence. Matthau's Golden Globe nominated performance shines so well here with Jill Clayburgh as he plays a liberal associate on the Supreme Court who now has to work with a woman for the first time on the Supreme Court. The movie itself is cute and it tries to do a lot of great things with its message, but Matthau's performance is definitely what makes it more enjoyable. Hopscotch. Talk about a film that feels really out of place with Matthau in the title role, but it also fits so damn well. Matthau plays a CIA agent who's demoted and decides to publish his memoirs revealing actions of his superiors, which could get him killed. So he goes on the lam and devises all sorts of tricks in order to make his escape. It's sincerely so much fun with Matthau tricking the CIA over and over while singing Barber of Seville frequently. Another great, great, simple, but fun Golden Globe nominated performance from Matthau. Awake and Sing. Yes, I'm counting this made for television movie presentation of the play by Clifford Odets because it's so captivating. It tells the story of a Jewish family in the Bronx in the 1930s who tried to get by with making $16 a week. They take in a new boarder, a World War I vet who lost a leg played by Matthau, who basically wakes them up and makes his way into the family. It's a heartbreaking piece, just like any Clifford Odets play, but of course Matthau gives it the electricity it needs to give you a spark of emotion. You can find this at any library as it was released graciously by the Broadway Theatre Archives. Number one, The Sunshine Boys. Again, one of the best plays and scripts by Neil Simon to be adapted into a movie. Like I said, it was a tough call to name my ultimate favorite and the best performance given by Matthau, but here you have absolutely the best of both worlds for him. He plays Lewis, who is the other half of a classic vaudevillian comic duo who is now washed up and can't get work anywhere, while his nephew, who is also an agent, is trying to convince and or force him to reunite with his comic partner for a TV special after years of not speaking or working with each other. Basically, it's like the odd couple who are older and actors, but that's one of the best and fun things about Matthau's performance. He assumed an older, older age perfectly. His actions as a washed up actor are totally genuine. Every line he says is quotable. And when you see him struggling, we genuinely do care for him, which thus brings his strong dramatic chops at full capacity here. He was nominated, of course, for the Academy Award for Best Actor of 1975 for this, and this will always be the performance that really gave me a true combo of laughs and chills for years to come. This was such a great leading performance that it hits me every time I view it on a much different level than his other dramatic performances and on a much different level for his other comedic performances. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my top 10 performances of Walter Matthau. And please tell me, did I miss anything? What are some of your favorite performances by this amazing, amazing man? I'd love for you to give your comments below. Please let me know. But anyways, it has been fun with this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys like this, please click like. But otherwise, I will see you very, very soon. Hope you guys are doing well. Keep on being great.